He's back. He's got it in his mouth right now. There you go. Nice. <laughs> Sight fishing rainbow trout. It doesn't get any better, buddy. Winter in Minnesota. It's easy for people to cozy up to a fire or maybe move down south for a few months. But for the throng of anglers who wait for lakes to freeze up each year, this is paradise. Today we're out with Garrett Sveer from Slab Seeker Fishing to target rainbow and brown trout, and we're gonna do it in a way that it's arguably the most exciting method possible. Lens is a little fogged up, but we just got in here, just got set up, and you were marking fish immediately, Garrett. Right away I dropped down there and I had one. He didn't hit it, he kept bumping it with his head. And so I never seen the wax worm disappear. I can just barely make out my jig. But that's a good sign there's a few around today. While we will be using electronics, Garrett augered out holes big enough for us to look through that clear water to see a fisher down there chasing our bait around. How deep are we? We're set up in 10 feet of water here and we're fishing about halfway down the water column. And that seems to be kind of the deal there. About halfway down, you get their attention from out in that deeper water. We're set up on a main lake point here where it drops real steep. So we're in 10 feet, but if you were to take a step out the door, you'd be in 20 out there. It's, we're really on a steep break line, which seems to be my most high percentage spots on these trout lakes. When you told me about sight fishing, for these fish, like I was envisioning a big, like a big spear hole basically, that we're a big rectangle that we're gonna be looking down, but that's not what we got here. You know, I, we have and we can do that too. Um, I had a guy that was helping me for a while, a few years back, and uh, we were every morning uh, doing an ice saw, uh, drilling four holes and then connecting them, and then spinning the big chunk of ice underneath. I went back to grab customers at the truck and he fell in trying to spin that. Oh no. So I came back to him in the hole holding oh, onto boy. the edge. Um, and so that kind of freaked me out. So I haven't been doing the spear hole as much <laughs> in the morning just uh, because of wrestling that big ice block. But yeah, we, we definitely do that. It works great too. I've been kind of clover leafing these. I think I drilled four for you. We're kind of employing a one-two punch here. I've got this bigger spoon on, and you just have a small tungsten on? Yeah, just a little tungsten jig with a wax worm. So a lot of times you can call them in with one of them with the, big, with the bigger spoon, and then the, the smaller tungsten will catch these fish. And that's common with a lot of species, I think. But uh, depending on how aggressive the bite is, uh, will determine which one of those two presentations they end up, they end up going after. Exactly. Oh, I just missed one. Just had one come and miss it. There he is. Got him. Nice. <laughs> so this fish, there he is, right here. Oh, it's a pike. Oh, it's a pike. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, a little pike. So I just saw the flash, and that's the beauty of sight fishing, is he came in and, and missed it. And I saw the flash, and I got excited, so I jigged it a little more, and he came in and, and smashed it. And yeah, not the target species, but you know what? Catching fish is catching fish and seeing them is, is even that much more fun. So. Absolutely. Yeah, unfortunately we do get a few, oh, here's a big trout, big trout down there. Come on, come on. Oh, he's losing interest. I have such a hard time with that. I know I've got a couple of buddies that they won't fish with anything but a tungsten, uh, at least for, you know, primarily panfish, bluegills, sure. perch, whatever. But I'm a spoon guy, man, I love, something big and noisy and flashy down there. Uh, a lot of times I get outfished. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with these though, they're charged up. That's a pretty good plan. I mean, they're pretty aggressive fish. I, I think that's my biggest problem though, is I like, I like to fish, you know? Yeah. Even, even up on a place like Lake of the Woods where dead sticks are so effective or walleye fishing when that real subtle, small light presentation does so well. I hate it. Like, I want to jig. Want to be jigging, yeah. yeah. Me too. That's what happens when there's a lot going on and all of a sudden I saw him marked real high and before I could even get the camera going, he came up and smoked it and I knew I was gonna drop him. <laughs> and yeah. We got him. We got him. <laughs> there nice you go. catch. <laughs> so he's not a giant, but this is a stocked leg, so it's put and take really, so they encourage harvest of these fish. You can keep five of them in Minnesota. And uh, great on the smoker, really good on the grill. You can pan yeah. fry them. So we'll give you a better look at them there, if we can focus. Nice. There's our first one, Garrett. Dinner fish, buddy. Hell yeah. 
throw this guy back here. Just put him anywhere. They're not easy to hold <laughs> is one thing. That's what I love about them though. <laughs> That's what makes them so much fun to catch because when, when you realize when you hold one just how strong they are when they squirm back and forth like that. <laughs> right. That's what they're doing though in there when they hook up with you. Exactly. The best way to land them, you did that perfect, is instead of trying to grab them when they're thrashing in the hole, is just to slide them up on the ice and then grab them because uh, it seems like you can never get a hold of them in the hole like that. Oh, I got one down here. Yes, yeah, I just marked one again. Yeah. I was going to show you what I was using, but then I marked a fish. I, and they usually do come in little packs like that too. There'll be little groups of them. Oh, yeah, I got one on me right now. Oh, yeah, there he is. He's chasing it, huh? Yeah. You can see him on your Vexler. It's so much fun to be able to watch him down there and sight fish these trout, Garrett. Oh, he just missed it again. <laughs> I had him too. Here he is. Yeah, I think I lost him. I got him on here. This is a better one here. Not huge, but better. Oh, yeah. Just kamikazes, aren't they? Isn't that fun? So much then fun. The best scenario is just to kind of slide them up on the ice here next to you, and that way you don't... If I try to grab them in the hole, I lose 100% of these fish. <laughs> <laughs> but there he is. I'll tell you, that's what I... Down. You know, what I kind of like about these fish is when they're aggressive, they hit on just about everything. Nice fish right there, Garrett. And well, then... I'm glad to... I'm glad I got one. You were kind of putting the, the <laughs> screws to me at first this way. Yeah. <laughs> Let's show show people what you're using there. I just have this little tungsten jig on. We were trying to do kind of a one-two punch, so it's just a little tungsten fly with a little hair on the back. Then I'm tipping that with a wax worm. And uh, I told Brett we needed small, and he said, this spoon catches everything. And he was right. <laughs> He's seen 10 times more fish than I have this morning with that spoon. I'll tell you what, this Al's Goldfish, am I getting a focus on it? I can't, oh, yeah, there we go. It's got this bent shape to it and this big shiny gold color to it. And I didn't know much about Al's Goldfish Lure Company. And then I got introduced to him up at Lake of the Woods and we put on this 49er and it caught all our fish. I, I tried a couple of different lures right away, Garrett. Once I switched to this one, I didn't take it off the entire the, the rest of the day. Fishing. Everybody else that was catching fish all caught it on it. So company's been around for 70 years. Has it really? They're from out east and they actually make lures that are coated in 22 karat gold. Wow. This one's not. This is just a gold color. But uh, if it catches fish, I don't care what it's coated. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> he's on it. Oh, he's right on it. You got him. You got him. <laughs> All right. <laughs> nice. You know, I dropped down to the bottom where you said the fish were. <laughs> <laughs> You're fighting with uh, the spoon for me, and then I just uh, got in the zone, and he came over and ate it. I feel like anytime I fish with an underwater camera or sight fish like we are today, my life changes <laughs> because you get a glimpse of what you're actually doing down there. You can see your action of your jig or lure or spoon, whatever you're using. And if you're lucky, you can see how the fish react to it. And sometimes it's good to see what you're doing down there and react. And sometimes it's better just to not pay attention. I was just responding to a text there. And I got a fish and what that tells us, even when you think you're not learning anything, you're learning something. So when I'm looking down the hole, I'm probably over jigging it today. Because as soon as I stop to answer a text message, I got bit in like three seconds. Hmm. So if you're ever on a guide trip with me and you see me texting, I'm just trying to learn <laughs> 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 what the fish are wanting. When it comes to trout fishing in Minnesota, make sure you pay attention to the regs because there's different rules and season dates in different areas of the state. Keep five of these, but only three of the five can be over 16 inches. So I was just telling Brett, we got a, we got four, but we need to get some of these overs. I'd like him to at least see a couple of the bigger ones. Yeah, for sure. Actually, I have seen a couple of the bigger ones. I had one on <laughs> briefly, but... Uh, you had one job, Garrett. Uh, yeah. So we're looking at the backside of winter here, backside of ice fishing, and we're seeing plenty of fish. I know what I always hear when you go down towards the metro and a lot of those lakes, they get fished out right after a uh, winter trout opener. So, and I always hear about a lot of those metro lakes after the first week, you might as well not even bother. Mm -hmm. I haven't fished on there, but it's always kind of a surprise to me because, um, you know, here in central Minnesota, 
uh, the few lakes that, that we have here for trout, they produce fish throughout the whole season. I mean, it, it gets, a lot of times towards the end of March, it, fishing can get really super good for them, almost the best bite of the whole winter. Seeing under the ice is like seeing into a different world and seeing how fish are actually reacting to what you're doing is just gonna make you a better angler and you're gonna have a lot more fun. And trout are the perfect species for sight fishing because of their aggressive nature. He's back, he's back, he's on it. You see him? Oh, he had it in his mouth. He's back, he's got it in his mouth right now. There you go, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sight fishing rainbow trout. It doesn't get any better, buddy. Heck yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Love it. So that fish came in, and we just had a dead stick down while I was filming, and I was watching it, and I had the camera right on it because I wanted to film. Like, Our perspective, yeah. yeah. Sight fish in these rainbows. I wanted to get it with the camera. So all of a sudden I saw this rainbow come in. I hit the record button. He it, ate it, spit it out, came back, ate it, spit it out. And then I realized I wasn't recording anyway. <laughs> so I'm like, Garrett, get over here. Grab this rod. If he comes back, you're going set to the, set the hook on this fish. He came back and uh, we got the whole thing. So there is your sight fishing for rainbow trout experience. What do you call it? Bow fishing of ice fishing? Yeah, it's hunting. like a bow hunting bow, of ice fishing. You got to get hunting. that close to him. Well, nice job, buddy. Hey, thanks, man. That was awesome.